Eric's working it. <laughs> Mr. Clark is on the job. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Wow, guys, we've been in this word here about faith versus fear, and we're on the subtopic of communication and how to talk. Really, just, just basically just normal conversation, just going on with life, but at the same time having the Lord as the premise for what, what we're doing here. See, God has to be the source of what we do. And everything, and anything that we do, God is our source. How do you make God your source? Just acknowledge Him. It's a very simple process. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your ways. Acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. Everybody say acknowledge. Acknowledge, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. You just got to acknowledge Him. Say God, this, this God, God, just acknowledge Him. You know, and if you want to make Him more affectionate, Father. That's the affectionate side. That's how you know if you have a relationship with God. Because you call him Father. You don't call him Father, you just call him God, then there's a lack of relationship there. You understand? So, anyways, we're talking about communication. And last week we, we gave a, a little bit of a synopsis of the different types of people that you're going to come across as a Christian. Even not being a Christian. <laughs> you remember that? What we talked about? Talked about the critic. Talked about the martyr. Talked about the wet blanket. I talked about the steamroller, remember that? The gossip, the two-face, uh, the control freak, the one who disengages, the one who has a cold shoulder, and the one who discredits and, and dis demeans. That's the envious person. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15 is where we, we left off, and it, and it refers to following peace with all men, without which no man shall see the Lord. And the emphasis is, is on all men, because all men you will come across. All men, saved and unsaved. So if you're in the household of the Lord, you obviously should be focusing in on really being that much even better with those that are in your own family. How do you, how do you treat somebody outside of your family like gold and you treat your, your uh, family members like they're nothing? It doesn't make sense. I mean, the, the family that you have should be the most important people in your life. And you should extend yourself to that and i believe that most of you do that you extend above and beyond hey we need to get, get this shut off we need to extend above and beyond what the norm is you know what i mean you, with people who don't know the lord people who don't know the lord how far do you go how far do you go really seriously how far do you go really yeah you only go to a certain degree after a little while you can tell me hey, you better back off me you keep on pushing me i'll sock you one no <laughs> not christians christians don't do that <laughs> praise the lord all right all right so now let's look at hebrews let's let's go from hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 15 then we're going to go into some of the ways to overcome some of these things that we face when it comes to communication remember what the word communicate means it means to what share. to share basically in a nutshell it means to share and sharing has it's two-sided it's not just one side and remember, lust is always based on taking. Love is always based on giving. So if you use that as a, like a rule of thumb, you'll be in a good place. Always think about giving. Think about what can I do for somebody, not always what you can do for me. You understand? Okay, so it's follow peace with all men. Did I tell you the scripture? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. I'll give you a minute to get there. Everybody got it? All right. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And this, this word bitterness means to cut, to prick, pointed, sharp, keen, and pungent to the sense of taste and smell. So we don't, obviously, that's, a, that's, a, that's not a good character trait. We want to get rid of that. And so there's ways to do that. And now here are some of the ways. If you want to learn to overcome some of the negativity that comes along with some of the things we face in life, and it brings up these things that are inside of us, and that's why the Lord put it in my spirit to really talk to you about faith versus fear. Because fear is the crux for the offense that takes place in a person's life. You understand? So, 
Number one, remember this, how to overcome, how to overcome a communication challenge with someone that can fall under those categories that I gave you. Number one, respect. What is the motive behind respect? Ephesians chapter 5 refers to a husband and a wife in relationship, and one of the things that the male wants out of the relationship in a marriage is respect. A female wants love. So males want what? Respect. respect. Females want what? Love. love. So in, in translation, when it comes to real life, what men see love as is respect. If you respect me, that means you love me. Now, it shouldn't be a fear, a fearful, tormenting type of respect. It has to do with the love, the love base. You understand? You with me? Everybody here? Everybody here? Okay. All right. So second thing, the second thing that needs to be practiced for you to be a good communicator is you need to be a good listener. For example, are you all listening to me right now? Yes. Did your mind travel somewhere just a moment ago? No. Or were you here? So it all, de it all depends on what? If you're a what? A good listener. You're paying attention to what's being stated to you. You all understand? And so, if I'm go in the, and so what is the implication of me listening to you? What does that imply to you? That I care about you. I'm concerned for your well-being. I'm concerned about where you're going in life. I want to be there for you. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you be, be a better person or better your situation. So I, for me to do that, I've got to know what's going on. Because one thing, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm not God. And I cannot see beyond your shell of your head and that brain, and I can't see your thoughts. So all I can do is listen to you. And if I hear you out and what you present to me, it's going to be what I will answer accordingly. Do you understand? So, but I got to be a good listener. I got to pay attention to you. So it gives a sense of respect. It gives a sense of love. It, it gives a, a measure of importance. Okay, and I, I believe that to be a, an important thing. James chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Go to James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. It's a simple practice, but it's easier said than done, and most people don't, do not do this. Um, have you ever had a conversation with somebody, and then they speak while you're talking? Yeah. And so what is that implying to you? They're not listening to you. They want to say what they what's going on in their head right now rather than t because conversation communication takes time it requires patience and it requires being willing to give of your time that's really what it is and and because really it's just just listen just listen you know I, again there's there's uh, information in this book uh influencing how to influence people and what is it does that mean how to influ influence people how to win friends and influence pe people and one of the things that, that uh, Mr. Carnegie mentions, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that everything he says is right, but this aspect of it is correct, is that if you're going to be a successful person in business, you've got to learn how to listen. You've got to be a good listener because you've got to listen to what the needs of the people are. And the majority of the things that take place in business, success-wise, has to do with fulfilling a need. Now, do you fulfill every need that's there out there in the world? No, there is a specific assignment to you, and God mandates it on us. It's up to you. So, again, God's going to speak to you, and he's going to tell you specifically what you're supposed to do. Now, if you don't listen, you're going to try everything and anything that comes along. So this is where you're going to have to zero in, zone in on to what does God want? What does God want me? What does he want me to do? Because then you'll be able to listen to him. And he will give you the right place and the right direction on where you should be going. Okay, so he says in uh, James chapter 1, verse 19, he says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So what must we do? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So it's easier said than done. Because it's going to require your time. Now, if 
you have a desire to accomplish something in life, who are you going to listen to? Let's say you want to become a singer. Who would you listen to? Singers. If you want to become a minister, who would you listen to? Ministers. If you want to become a chef, who would you listen to? Chefs. And you know what you do whenever you come across the, the business career you choose to follow that God puts inside of you to do? What you start to do is you start to look at individuals. Like for me, I listen to the word and the content of what's being presented when, it, when I'm listening to a minister. But I'm also listening to how it's presented because I want to better me. I want to become a better person. I want to better who I am as a Christian. And the only way to do that is I got to listen to other people, mentors that I look up to, and I see them succeeding in life. And I say, okay, I see that. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to do exactly what they do because I need to be my own person. Y'all understand? Y'all all with me here? So I'm going to be my own person, so, but it does not mean that I'm not going to have principles that I'm going to use because does everybody in here read the Bible? And are there principles in the Bible that you do? But are you just like I am? No, you're all different. We're all different. We're all unique. And there is a specific, because can you imagine if we were all just one eyeball? If everybody's just an eyeball, how would the eyeball get along? Huh? <laughs> can you imagine if your eyeballs had two wheels involved? Where would you go? How would you know where to go? Because one eyeball may say, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go this way. And you're, both your eyeballs are going crazy. Well, you're going to end up having an issue. <laughs> well, God set it up for us to function accordingly. Our bodies are made to work as one whole being, but there are all different parts in the body. Do you understand? All the different parts in the body are working all together toward the same goal. So, you, so, so you're flowing with me on this? So, okay. So num number three. So that, that, that was about listening. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be a good listener. Or else if you end up getting in a wrathful position, it's because you weren't listening. You heard the wrong thing. You understand? So just a simple thing. Third thing, look for some compatibilities. Look, look, look for some things in a relationship that you're compatible with that person with. So, I mean, not uh, like, uh, let's, let's use this, okay? I'm 50 years of age, and I like playing video games. I like, you know, going out there and shooting, shooting the guns, you know, and, and I'm not killing nobody. But in the game, in my mind, I like playing video. I like, I'm winning the game. I'm not killing anybody. I'm, that's not the mindset I have, that I want to kill somebody. But it's, it's because I like playing the video games, and I like winning. I hate losing. I don't know about you, but I do not like losing. I hate losing. If we play basketball, some of you that have, who have played basketball with me, Understand, I hate losing, but it is a part of what we do in life. You know, what I'm, you, you understand there's things that I choose to do. Something that, uh, some people like to just sit and read books, just sit and read. Some people like to do things like, I don't know, what, what do you, huh? Hiking. Some people like going hiking. You guys got to come with us to the Copper Hill hike. I challenge you to the hike. <laughs> but nonetheless, there's different things that people like doing, right? But just because you like doing it doesn't mean everybody's going to like it. There's ty different types of music that people like listening to. Some people are like, that's their preference. I don't like that. And then there's other guys, people that like, Whatever, opera stuff. I do not like opera. I mean, I'm not knocking the challenge or the, the skill that they have to be able to hit some of those notes. Ooh, that's, that's a gift. So I commend you. It's not my cup of tea <laughs> okay so i i like i like different type of music I, like some of you don't like oldies some of you like you know the doo-bop kind of oldies you know some of you don't like them i do i like the oldies you know that's just my style but it doesn't so it, so this is what i'm saying to you 
if you come over to my home, what I'm there for is I'm there to entertain you. So if we're going to sit down and watch a movie, and if that's what you like doing, then we're going to sit down and watch a movie, and it's something that's going to be to your preference, not necessarily my liking. And I'm going to be willing to pay the price on your behalf because of that reason. Other than the gore and the sex stuff, I, not really fa- I don't really favor those types of movies. Now, I do like action. I, I don't know about you, men, but I like action movies. You know, like the Saving Private Ryans, the, the Gladiators, the 300, you know. I, 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 I like those kind of movies, you know, the, the action kind of movies, you know. So, but, but that's my preference. Not everybody may like that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So that means that there's got to be some sharing with each other. That means I'm going to have to pay the price. If I want to maintain my relationship with my wife, I'm going to have to watch Pride and Prejudice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sit on that couch, whether I fall asleep or not, I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) It's my nap time. No. (laughs) But do you, you understand the point of this? There's preferences that people have, but that has to do with compatibility. There's certain things that you don't, you may not like others, and, that, and it is that way in a marriage. I mean, when people, b- before marrying, there's got to be some compatibility with each other if you're going to enter in a marriage. You can't be saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a, 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 a Muslim, and I'm going to be a Christian, and you, you expect to come together in a marriage, and everything's going to be fine. You're going to have some problems. You understand? There's, got, there's, there's differences. I've counseled people in marriage, marriage counseling, where the people, one, one spouse or one person wants to have babies, the other one doesn't. I've counseled a person that believed that the only reason for the intimacy is to, give, uh, to have babies. Counsel them. Christians. Can you imagine what the man is going through? Well, I guess because I'm a man, I understand what they're going through. <laughs> the females, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> but for the males, it's a whole different ballgame. And it's just a part, of, it's a part of communication. It's a part of sharing. That there has to be some compatibility with each other. Do you understand? So in a friendship, shouldn't there be some compatibility with each other? If there's going to be a friendship, there's got to be something we have in common. And one thing I can say to you all in here right now, is that you have Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. We all have that in, in common. And we can talk the word. We can talk about Jesus. Isn't that right? So if you have nothing in compati- you know, to compare yourself with or com- in compatibility with, then you do have Jesus Christ. So you can talk Jesus. Every single one of you. If you don't talk Jesus, then what are you talking? You're talking something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So now, when that, that, that was the fourth thing, right? The fifth thing, to, so, so look for some... Third thing, um, that was third? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was number three. So the fourth thing is, whenever you speak, give specific definition. Don't assume that they understand you. Now, there are times you can have an understanding and not agree. So yeah, I may understand what you're saying, but I don't agree with you. You, you with me on that? So you can, you can agree to disagree. Let's put it that way. So the point being is that have some understanding. Make sure you are clear in what you're speaking to them. It's like this, from what I'm, what I'm doing right now, I need to make sure you understand where we are understanding each other. Because if I'm presenting something to you and you don't understand, then w- w- what am I speaking about? I, I heard this minister talk one time that he gave all these huge words wherein it, it required for the listener to go back, and that was the intent, it was a professor, and that was his intent, for them to go back and look up all the definitions to those words. But while they're sitting and listening to the professor as he's speaking, like, like some of the words we were learning in, on Wednesday night Bible study, dialectical materialism and these different terminologies that are out there, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> his, his comment was, when the student said, I didn't understand a word you talked about. He goes, I accomplished what I needed to accomplish. <laughs> See, you, you don't get anywhere when you don't understand. And Jesus, Jesus referred to the fact in Matthew's gospel, chapter 13. He says, if you don't have the understanding, you'll be in darkness. 
So it's that way in a relationship, in communication. If you do not understand each other, there's going to be a void. There's going to be a distance. And this is where you need to make sure you're clear in your definition when you do speak to each other. You, you with me on this? Okay. So now, that was four, right? Yeah. Now number five. And, and this is something that I have to say I have to work on. Because as an authoritative figure, I can come across this way. And I've done it just kidding around before, you know, so I'm going to read it to you. Minus out any threats to make your point clear. So I've done this before. We went to a, a restaurant. We sat, it was at Pie and Burger. You guys, if you ever want to have a good burger, it's called Pie and Burger in Pasadena. It's on California Boulevard, California and Lake Boulevard, and it's still there. Oh, man, excellent burgers. Thick I mean, you know, you, you get them the, on the, from the grill, they're fr it's fresh meat, it's thick, it's juicy, it's taste, it's really, and they're pies, they make them every day. Every day. Good pies. So anyway, uh, getting you prepped for lunch after this. Okay, so I'm sitting down at the counter, and there was a, and we, you know how you sit like a regular coffee cafe type of setting, and you sit at the counter, and, and they come and they wait on you. So they had, they had tables too, but we sat at the counter th at this time. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting with, uh, listening to, we had some friends of ours. And so I'm waiting. I'm sitting there, and this, this person is, is asking her questions about the menu. And she goes back and forth asking questions, asking questions. And then she just starts talking about just, just anything. I don't mean, I remember what it was about. So I'm just listening. I said, so I jokingly stated, will you hurry up? And boom, that waitress dropped her and said, went away. What can I help you with, sir? Right away. She felt threatened. And it wasn't that I was intending to do that. It was really a joke to mess with my friend that was with us. But the waitress took it as a serious thing. And she dropped her quick and came right to me and said, Sir, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Well, now that's a communication of threat. Another thing. If you don't come to church, if you don't come to church, you're going to pay the price for that. I'm communicating, but I'm communicating with a threat. Y'all understand? And so when you do this, you know, you have this conversation with each other. And don't, don't, don't communicate it as if you want to hurt the person. You know, and, 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 you know there's a simple practice in, in communication. Look to the person next to you, to your right or to your left, and give them a smile. See, that's a, that's, a, that's a simple practice of communication. And it is, it is a proven fact, even in sales, and some of you business people can tell me this or not, if this is right, correct or not, if you're on the telephone and you're not smiling, it is felt. So I'm on the phone. Yes? Can I help you? Or, or go, Santa Clarita Christian Center. And I've done it. And I know I've done it to the people that are solicitors. And I know it. I see the number. 866 numbers. <laughs> Santa Clarita Christian Center. <laughs> what am I doing to the person? I do, not, I do not want to talk to you. You are harassing me. You've been calling me now for the past month. Santa Clarita Christian Center. Or Santa Clarita Christian Center. It comes across in a different form. And so it, there's, there is... In a tone of voice, there's a threat. There can be a potential for threat. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, you have an issue with somebody, and you come to the place where you decide that I'm going to apologize. I am sorry. Do you hear? Did you hear me? I said it. I, did you hear what I said? I said I was sorry. Okay, do you forgive me now? Because I forgive you. Well, obviously, that's a threat. <laughs> Y'all understand? So there's, there's practices you need, to, you need to do in controlling. That's a control of your emotions. And that's not an easy thing to do when you're in the heat of the battle. And you're in the heat of the battle. You're communicating. Uh, one of the things that I've learned just from me personally from the Lord and, and how he handled the pressures that he went through. I mean, his, if, if his back is totally 
thrashed. His face was beaten to a mar where he couldn't even see. He's lost blood. He's been carrying this cross for I don't know how long that walk was. And then they nail him through, his, through the palms of his, hand, of his hands and his wrists. And they nail his ankles. I mean, just messing with your toe. Have you ever cut your toenail wrong or something? You jabbed it or something? Doesn't, doesn't it cause pain? He's got, he's got, it went right through the bones of his foot. So, and then they, then they throw him up on the cross in that hole, and he's hanging on that cross. And so that, ho that cross, that wood's got to go into the hole, and boom, land. Oh. And think about Jesus. What did he do? Father, forgive them. He said that after the fact, yes. He didn't say, he didn't say nothing. One of the things he did say, which was an emotional expression that he had, Father, why have you forsaken me? Did he say that? That was the human side of his life. He, because you think about it, he, what, what would you say if you were in that position? Where are you, God? Father! <laughs> you know, you're, pain, you're in pain. Well, the point being is that he controlled his emotions. And instead of retaliating against the ones that offended him, he forgave them. He asked for forgiveness. He, he asked them to be forgiven. Right? That's control of emotions. That's control. Of, and so when you're in a conversation with somebody, you got to have some control of your emotions. All right. Last one. Be loving and not competitive. So what were you doing uh, yesterday? You were doing something with you and uh, Sabrina, remember, Felicia? What was that called? One-upping. One-upping one on a conversation. You guys know what that means? You ever heard of that expression? Well, hey, I got me, a, I got me an iPad right here. Check this out, man. Isn't that, this is a nice iPad, huh? Yeah, 16 gigabyte. And then you come, say, well, I got, I got an iPad too. Got 32 gigabytes, huh? <laughs> and then someone else comes and says, Yo, I got an iPad too, but it's 64 gigabytes. Mm. <laughs> you like that? So you're one upping, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, you, you're in a competitive place rather than how would you normally address somebody like, like myself? I got this for my birthday. So I say, Okay, I got this, you know, I got this iPad, I use it, and it's a gift, you know, I'm grateful. How, how would you respond to that? What would you normally say? Yeah, I'm very happy for you. Man, what a, man, God is so good. You rejoice with the person rather than, who do you think you are? You got that thing, man. That's a, that's a devil too anyways. It's the inter internet, the devil's using all that stuff, internet stuff. <laughs> you, you understand? It's like, you don't, you don't compete with somebody you love. You appreciate where they are. Man, it, somebody gets a brand new car, what are you going to do? Go there. Uh, are, you, are you sure you can handle that, that payment on that? Or, you know, how did you, how did you get that? You know, how did you afford that? It's like, what is wrong with you? You, you rejoice with the people. You be happy for them and believe if, they're gonna, if they have payments that they can pay that thing off in the name of Jesus. You're with me on this? So those are just suggestions for you to, to adapt your life to. Lack of relationship is a lack of commitment, and we generally are quick to see the faults of others when we do not have a relationship with them. You got to make a decision to not focus in on the faults of other people. Who should we be looking at to change, to change? Ourselves. We need to change ourselves. You see, and one, one of the things that I know scripturally, Romans chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, see, God is not going to come in and change your mind. God gives you what you need in order to change it. So it's just like saying, okay, I'm going to live healthy, but you eat wrong. It's not going to work that way. You have to choose for God's health to be a part of your life as you obey what you need to do to be healthy. Or else you're going to, be, you're going to face sickness and disease. Oh, I want to get thin. I want to lose some weight. Anybody, anybody ever say that? 
Okay, so I'm going to get thin, I'm going to lose some weight, I'm going to get some muscles on me, I'm going to get bigger, I'm going to get thinner, I'm going to, whatever, okay, your, your preference. You know, you can say it all you want, and God is there for you to support you in this, but if you don't do nothing about it, nothing's going to change. You got to do something. It's called faith. It's called action, right? Communication demands self-control. And it is called in the Bible temperance. It is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. So self-control is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Assurance of importance is critical for a relationship. I need to emphasize to you that you are important to me. And, and it is simp it's a simple thing. It is called acknowledging. So I, I have a, uh, some beautiful young people that are in our church, and a lot of times they'll come to me, and they'll say, and they'll, they'll be standing there waiting to speak to me, and I'll, and I'll see them, and I'll greet them. Hey, how you doing, Brian? Man, it's good to see you, man. Praise the Lord. How you doing, Pastor? I'm doing well. Can you imagine if I have one of the young people come to me, and I look down at them and turn around and walk away? How would that make you feel? Would you feel good about yourself? See, and it is a simple thing. It's just, it's just simply a, an acknowledging. Say, you walk into a room and you act like nobody's there. You're not acknowledging anyone. See, and I've, I've always been a people person. And, and my wife knows that. Even, I mean, I've gone into my in-laws. Some of my in-laws would hate to go to coffee shops with me because of how open I am with talking to people. Not in-laws, some family members, some family members. And they were just, they were just not like, they were not like, man, there he goes again. He's going to go talk to another. Look, there, there, okay, let's go. Come on. I don't want to talk to you. Because <laughs> I'm that way with people. I'll, I'll see them and see them. I, I want to see them. I want to be part of your life. So I'll talk to you. You, you understand? And it is a part of the process of life. If you don't think that way, you're a selfish person. You know, the world doesn't revolve just around you. <laughs> it's about other people. You know, other people are in your life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So assurance of importance is critical for a relationship. So if I don't acknowledge you, I'm saying to you, you're not important. Everybody here? I mean, right here? Okay. Placing value in another Breeds acceptance, affection, and approval. Placing value in someone else is going to breed affection, acceptance, and approval. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 10. Go to Romans 12, 10. Romans chapter 12, verse number 10. This is an easier said than done verse. Ready, ready? Ready? It says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Isn't that a good verse? Be, be what? Kindly what? Affectionate. So that means to me, what I read there is that I can be unkindly affectionate. Because this saying if for me to be kindly affectionate, then there, there must be some room for me to be unkindly affectionate. Because affections is an emotion. And it is, it is expressed. So now I can express emotions that are not kind. Right? Like I'm driving down the, the street and I tailgate you. Isn't that an affection? <laughs> it's an unkind affection <laughs> hurry up get out of the way I'm expressing an emotion that's really what it is so be but be kindly affectionate one to another and how do you do this with what what does it say brotherly love what kind of love brotherly love and brotherly love is not perverted there's no sexual content to it. Brotherly love is respect and honor to one another. 
So just because I love you does not, does not mean and translate that I want to have a relationship with you physically as a male. And then on a female side, as a male to a female, being that I am a married man, and even if I were not married, until, because the only boundaries for that type of affection is in marriage. So if I'm in, the, in a relationship with somebody, it just because I affection, I'm affectionately loving you does not mean I want to go to that place that's called the eros love and not the agape love. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Eros, erotic, is where we get the root erotic, the root word for erotic in talking about sexual contents with, the, with male and female or other stuff. <laughs> so, so be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, and brotherly love is always respectful. It always has that line of demarcation. I, I treat the, 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 those that are over me in years as my mother, those that are equal in years as to my age as my sister, and those that are younger than me as if they were my, my children. You know? I got to have respect. And you don't allow your mind to go to that place. You draw the line. There's, that's why the Bible calls them. You go to Leviticus, read it. It has demarcations, the codes, the coded law, the stuff that the in-between stuff that, that, that the Ten Commandments doesn't give out. The coded law gives the moral, moral living, how you should live. There's things that you need to draw. You know how far you should go. That's why... Brother and sister don't mess around with each other that way. Right? Sister and sister, brother and brother. It doesn't work that way. That is preserved and reserved for marriage only. And marriage between a male and a female. That is God's method. So be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. So if, if, you come, if, you, if I'm invited to your home, how are you going to treat me? Yeah, kindly affection. You're going to honor me. You're going to give me preference. So if, if you're sitting down playing a video game, and you know I like playing video games, you're going to say, Pastor, I only have one controller, but you know what? Because you're my guest, I'm honoring you with this baton of the... Passing the passing, because I because I respect you, I honor you. So here you here you go, Pastor. Sitting down at the table, you ready to get fed? I come to your home, you're ready to feed me. I'm ready to eat. I sit down at your table, you put your plate on the table, you eat first. <laughs> and then you say, Okay, Pastor, did you want to eat? <laughs> You're messing with me. We'll take you down, son. <laughs> okay, but you, un you understand that's, that's called honoring. That's honoring. Go to Psalms 119. We honor, we prefer one another. We allow for people to have that honor. We give it to them. You know how I know I'm the head of my house? You know how I know that? Want me to tell you how I know that? Because my wife gives me permission to say so. <laughs> yeah, you get a witness back there, huh? <laughs> See, I, I'm the boss in my house, and I have my, permission to, my, my wife's permission to say so. Well, see, she allows me to be the head of the house because, she, you know what? If she didn't want to, she didn't have to submit to me. And I, don't, I wouldn't have to submit to her if I didn't want to. But we love one another. We prefer one another. I'm always thinking of, what, 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 what can I do for you? How can I honor you? What do you want? I'm always thinking that way, and she's always thinking that way of me. So then our marriage blossoms. We have a beautiful marriage, right, baby? I love it. I love being married. Okay, Psalms 119, verse 165. You that are not married, one day you'll be married. You're going to enjoy it. It's a good thing. It's really awesome. Okay, verse 165 says, um, well, let me, sit, let me make the statement to you. Choosing not to be easily offended is an Art of maturity. Okay? So you know you're immature if you're constantly being offended. If you're easily offended, there's a lack of maturity in your life. But the only way to go 
and grow to maturity is to go through it. There's no way you're going to go around it. You're going to face carnality. You're going to face bad moods. You're going to face bad things, you know, things that are going to come your way that make you moody and irrational in your thinking, your responses. You're going you're gonna to face those things. That's, that's part of life. You guys are not getting around that. You're going to go through that. But you're going to go through it and not stay in it. And the problem is that people, many times people, stay in it. And they fester in that. And they wallow up in that thing. And they become muck in the muck of it. <laughs> and they get stuck and they can't do nothing. And their minds get so used to living moody that they forget about other people. It's all about me. Verse, uh, Psalms 119, verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law. And look at the next phrase. What does it say? Nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. What thing? Nothing. Nothing at all shall offend them. Nothing, no thing shall offend them. Not a thing. That is maturity. <laughs> Let me know when you get there. Okay. Communication requires, remember I said this to you, communication requires vulnerability. I use the analogy of the apple and the, and the banana. So an apple that from the market, normal market, you see it is all buffed up, nice and shiny, looks nice and shiny, but, but does not, it, in, in, a, in an analogy form, it does not want to be bitten. It doesn't want to get messed up. It wants to stay in its shell. A banana is ready to be peeled, ready to be eaten. But if you leave the banana long enough, the banana will get bruised and so forth. So in just equating to, using that as an analogy to equate where you are in character, are you willing to allow yourself to be bitten and eaten from the fruit? Because that's what the fruit of the Spirit is. Fruit is supposed to be what? Eaten. So if you have fruit on a tree, you eat the fruit. And the purpose for the fruit is to what? Nourish your body. So if you're not sharing of your life, sharing the fruit, then obviously you're going to cut off some of the nutrition that we need. Say, say to the person next to you, say, I need your nutrition. Because <laughs> that's where it blends, you know what I mean? You are giving to each other, and it's going to cause growth. It's going to cause you to grow and mature. Don't you agree? All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. We're almost done, guys. You're enduring. Oh, we got, we got a minute. Hurry up. Matthew 24. Hurry. And then we'll end it with this so that we can take off from here uh, next week. Matthew 24, verses 10 through 13. I'm going to read it to you, okay? It says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we're going to take off from this, Matthew 24, verses 10 through 13. And what it's referring to is, are the things that our world is in right now. We're talking about hatred, about betrayal, about false teachings that are out there, about people who are lying and deceiving and lying to each other. I'm talking to even Christians. And they are in unbalanced in their lifestyle, and their love is grown cold, where they're not allowing themselves to be open so because of the offenses they've taken. And... The Bible says, Jesus said it, if you endure outside of those things, you'll be saved in the end. So we'll take this up next week. Hey, we want to thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you uh, enjoying. I trust it was enjoyable to you. I mean, this is, this is about teaching how to live our lives in line with the Word. So we appreciate your presence, and we'll see you on the next time. Praise the Lord. God is good. <laughs>